my name is Laura and the second season of Heartbreak High has just dropped on Netflix but I can tell right from what I'm seeing online that there's a lot of Aussie humour or Aussie culture that comes up in this show that goes right over people's heads so I'm going to explain it to you but don't worry I won't be giving spoilers away now Heartbreak High was actually a really popular show that came out in the 90s and just like everything else in media nowadays they can't come up with anything new so 20 years later we have Heartbreak High again. So let's break down Aussie culture that comes up in Heartbreak High and I'm going to start with season one, episode one. One of the first scenes it starts out with Missy driving her car and one of the first things you'll notice is the pea plate. Now the pea plate is actually a really huge Aussie icon here. It's actually a big coming of age symbol. So here in Australia you start with your L plates which is when you're learning to drive at the age of 16 and you have that for roughly about a year because you can't get your P plates until you pass the test uh, until you're 17. And that is when you're given your P plate, which is your right to drive. But you're given that one for two years. And what does the P plate mean? It just means you're a provisional driver. It's just there to tell other people on the road that you're either inexperienced or you're going to drop a burnout in any second flat. It's either one of those things. It's never in between. You're either a nervous driver or a hoon. Now, one of the next things that you'll notice is the sticker on the back of Missy's car. And it's actually a representation of the Aboriginal flag. Now, here in Australia, we have two flags. We have the one that the whole world knows being the Australian flag. And then we also have a flag for our First Nations people. Now, generally, these two flags are shown hand in hand. But unfortunately, in our country, there is still a big divide because unfortunately, yes, white people did take their land. Now, Missy being an Aboriginal character isn't actually a huge part of the show, but unfortunately, it comes up as the butt of the next joke. And that is when the private school boys call out, Nice car, Stanley. Now, unfortunately, here in Australia, there is still a lot of racism that goes on. And one of the big stereotypes is that Aboriginal people live off Centrelink. Now what Centrelink? It's actually just Australia's public welfare system. We know that not all of Aboriginals actually live off the of Centrelink. Unfortunately, racism still exists. Which is why Amory shouts back rapists towards the boys because clearly by the looks of them they go to a private all boys school and stereotypically they tend to be very misogynistic against women. Now one of the next opening scenes isn't really a huge Australian cultural thing but I want you to note that not a single person here is actually wearing a school uniform. Now here in Australia and even in public schools, all school students must wear a uniform. Now it could be um, something full on from like a suit tie, you know, blazer, whatever. Or generally it's just the correct coloured polo shirt. Uh, when I went to school all we had to do was wear the correct coloured polo shirt. And as you can see, they don't. Now, I'm not really sure exactly why they're not wearing a uniform in this show, but I have three possibilities. Maybe they were trying to do a bit of a throwback back to the 90s version of Heartbreak High, because back in that show, they didn't wear a school uniform either, because back then, school uniforms in Australia wasn't really a big thing. Two, maybe they're trying to appeal to an American audience. Or three, which is the reason I'm choosing to kind of side with, is possibly just the showrunners or the people who made the show were really trying to show off each character's personality by having them dress in their kind of sense of style. I actually don't know the correct answer for that one and if anyone does just let me know. The next big thing that sets up the whole storyline for the show is when the students find the whole sex map that Amory and Harper had drawn all over the walls. And that's when you'll hear Darren say, What in the kids' helpline? Now, what is the kids' helpline? The helpline is kind of a little bit similar to the suicide prevention helpline. What it is, is a program that helps underage youth be able to talk to someone about either mental health or social issues. And here is the number here. Now, one of the next big scenes is obviously when Amory has been taken into the principal's office and she's getting hounded for the whole sex map on the wall by Woodsy, which is the principal. And she says, The Guardian, Emery. The Guardian. Now she says that quite a few times, but The Guardian, it's just an Australian news publication. What kind? Yep, Australians do say cunt a lot. It all depends on the type of term that you say it on, and it's very similar to the word mate. Now you can either say, oi mate, or you can say, mate. 
and it all just comes up with how you say it, whether it be a derivative term or you're just having a yarn with your mates. Esheba. That actually sounds really lame coming from me because I'm an old lady now. <laughs> but in my opinion, an Eshe is a dunkant. So you could say it is like a wannabe gangster or a wigger. But in my opinion, they just kind of give off that English twat vibes. And usually you can spot a Eshe by the whole Tommy Hilfiger hat, Tommy Hilfiger shirt, Tommy Hilfiger bottoms. <laughs> And the side bag thing, I don't really know what's up with the side bag. Quite often these ones are just hanging out in low economical kind of areas. They'll hang out at like the bus stations or the trainers and these idiots are just trying to bung like, you know, vapes and shit off the underage people. Uh, quite often they are into petty crime, but on the other side, I think most of them are just trying to act cool by dressing like an English twat. That's the way I think. Tommy Hilfiger. <laughs> And the next one you'll hear Spider say, How is stereo, bruh? Stereo. And all he's referring to is Stereosonic, which is just at a big Australian music festival. And this is also referring to the music festival that Amory is continuously having to have flashbacks and remember what happened to Harper at. Are you wagging school? <laughs> so what's wagging? Well, it's just truancy. Skipping, flogging, ditching, whatever you want to call it. It's just when you're skipping school. And in Australia, we call it wagging. Now the next iconic Aussie thing is Amory swallowing the fly. Now it's no mistake that Australia is full of flies and it doesn't matter where you are, you just can't seem to get away from them. So whether it be you're at work or taking a stroll in the bush or crying on the beach like Amory, I'm pretty sure every Australian has swallowed a fly at one point. The next big thing isn't really an Australian cultural thing, but I do want to put this one out there for those that don't know the OG series, and this is actually when we get introduced to Darren's father. Hey! What the bloody hell are you doing? And he turns out to be none other than Peter Rivers. Now, Peter Rivers was a huge character in the original series, and I tell you what, age has really caught up to this bloke. That was a lot of Aussie things, and that was just episode one. Okay, so let's move over to episode two. I love Paddle Pop. One of the ice cream favourites here in Australia is the Paddle Pop. It's the simple ice cream on the stick made by Streets. And one of the favourite flavours is Rainbow. But the big thing here in Australia is what a lot of people don't realise is the Rainbow flavour, it's just caramel. You know, it ruined my life when I found out that Rainbow flavour is actually just caramel. Caramel? Yes. You're kidding. I'm not. But there are so many people today that refuse to believe it's caramel because they've always been brought up to believe the flavor is rainbow. So one of the things that kind of came up in this episode, which is a little bit of a flashback to the 90s version of Heartbreak High, is actually Darren reading his father's poetry. Her flannel shirt whips him like an animal. <laughs> so Peter Rivers' character back in the OG one, he was a bit of a bad boy, but he also had a sweetheart. And unfortunately, this underage person fell in love with his school teacher. And in the series, it was a big controversy because they had a relationship. Unfortunately, the relationship didn't come to pass and the teacher got caught and had to move away. Do I do this to your stuff, huh? Do you see me grabbing your stuff? Obviously, we can see many years later that his father has still kept that poetry and is still writing more to it, which kind of says that he never fell out of love with his teacher. A le snack between my butt cheeks. Le snack. So what is a le snack? Now a le snack is just a really popular Australian lunchbox treat. All it is is three crackers and a cheese dip, but I don't know what it is about this one, but you didn't have your Aussie lunchbox set unless you had a le snack and your Vegemite sandwich. Amory rolling on the recorder. Okay, so the recorder. Yes, that is an Australian thing. Everybody here in Australia in primary school has to learn an instrument and unfortunately, it's the recorder. And unfortunately, it just sounds atrocious. And every mum and dad in Australia hated their kids for having to bring that recorder home and practice. Now, Malachi finding a nang 
is this really an Australian thing? I'm not really sure, but it is quite funny because it kind of just shows that they're at that age now where the whole, um, you know, drug, sex and alcohol is coming more into their teen lives. What's a Nang? It's actually just a small little thing of nitrous oxide. They're supposed to be used for whipped cream canisters, but obviously people use them to get high. Now this has nothing to do with the series, but has anyone noticed how much Amory in this scene looks like that chick from The Witcher? Episode three. So we have povo. What your povo dog? It just means poverty. But yeah, here in Australia, everything ends in an O. Povo, bottle -o, servo. I like koalas. Sad how they get all that chlamydia. Koalas having chlamydia. Yep, it's a thing. Lots of koalas here in Australia have chlamydia. Dusty's voodoo. Nah, she's too busy worrying about Dusty's voodoo. Oh. It's just slang. That's all it is for D. Now, it has come up a few times in the previous two episodes, but in case you haven't noticed this one yet, Cash is a food courier. And as you can see, Uber Eats didn't get the sponsorship for this show, so Cash is delivering for Emu Eats instead. Now, Goon is actually mentioned. I would have saved you some Goon or something. And what is Goon? It's just boxed wine. A lot of young people like to drink Goon because one, it's cheap, it's highly alcoholic so you can get drunk really fast, and then when you're ready to pass out, you just blow the bag up and you've got yourself a pillow. Now, we're finally up to episode four and we're introduced to Kurt Peterson. Kurt Peterson was actually also another really popular showrunner in the OG series of Heartbreak High. I was a student here at Hartley High. Who eventually left school and became a police officer, to which we find out in the show that he ended up getting injured on the job by tripping over a fence. Blackfella world. Now the term blackfella has come up, and fella is just a bloke. Now here's me gonna white explain something here, but here in Australia it does not matter the colour of one's skin to whether or not someone is actually classified as black and white, as long as someone has some form of Aboriginal in their family, they're classified as a black person. We have a yarn. Having a yarn, it just means talk. Jinger. This jing is not gonna give me pink eye, is it? Yep, it's a G-string. I know a lot of people in America call them thongs. That's actually what we put on our feet, but we call these things G-strings because it's a string that goes like me jinger. Now in the next couple of scenes, you'll hear the word, my brother, Darty and deadly. Proper deadly, hey, do Darty. I really don't think I need to white explain those things, but I'm sure you can work that one out. Now, one of the next big things that happen in this episode, unfortunately, is the police brutality against Malachi. <laughs> and unfortunately in this scene, he is getting highly picked on by a police officer, purely because he is an Aboriginal person and drunk. It's actually really hard to watch the scenes that kind of follow after this one, because it's actually really sad to know that there are people in countries all over the world that don't feel comfortable living where they live purely because of the color of their skin. I just got goosebumps. So we're up to episode five now, which funny enough is actually called Bin Chicken. There's not really a hell of a lot of ugly humor that goes on in this particular episode, but I do find it funny because you've got the kids all at the start picking up rubbish and then Towards the end, you find out that the school logo is a bin chicken. I still can't believe they have a bin chicken as our mascot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, what's a bin chicken? It's just an ibis. An ibis is a particular bird that is supposed to live in the wild, but has actually become incredibly lazy and has worked out that they can scavenge food off people and they have worked out how to open up rubbish bins as well and which is why we call them bin chickens. Okay, so we're up to episode six now. And also again, there's not a lot of Aussie humor that does come up, but we do have the big scene here where we have the character Quinny and she goes to the book signing for her favorite book, Angeline of the Underworld. And what a lot of people might have actually not picked up on is the person who plays the author of the book is actually real life person, Natalie Tran. Now, Natalie Tran is actually a big Australian YouTuber who was supposed to come back to YouTube last week. 
how many years ago now. Natalie Tran ran a YouTube channel called Community Channel, which you can still check out to this day. Please do that after you watch my video, thank you. And she would make fantastic comedy skits and a lot of it was based around Aussie humor as well. But she took a break from YouTube and hasn't come back. Okay, so we're up to episode eight now. And we are heading back to Malachi's story and you'll find that Malachi has actually left school. Now what has happened is he's actually gone what we call walkabout. Walkabout is actually a bit of a coming of age ritual for a lot of people in the Aboriginal community. And it is just a way for them to get back with their spirit and culture. And generally they head out into the bush. As white people, we call it camping. Where's Malachi? Uh, he's not here, miss. He's gone my country. Now, you may also have heard Missy as well saying gone country. Oh, oh like overseas. Generally, that refers to going out um, to the outback as well. It's also another way to refer to getting into ties with their spirit and culture. Okay, finally, we've made out to episode eight. I don't want to spoil too much that goes on, but there is a huge scene with Amory and it is with Chook's car. And... I have to point this one out because it is a little Australian, the fact that he drives a Commodore. Now it is a big thing that um, a lot of bad boys or hoons tend to drive either Falcons or Commodores and guess who else drives a Commodore? But no, 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 I, I need my Commodore. So that was my take on the Aussie culture that comes up in season one of Heartbreak High. If you like this one, I will do another one for season two. Season two actually throws this one right out of the water when it comes to Aussie culture. Let me know what you think. I hope you come. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you next time. Bye.